Hello, everyone. My name is Jordan Brown. I am an undergraduate senior student in Dr. Sally Corner's Lab of Ecology. And today I'll be presenting my independent project on analyzing the reproduction of Schizarium scoparium in a heat wave. Abstract, historically, longleaf pine, also known as longleaf pine savanna ecosystems, were one of the most abundant ecosystems in the Southern United States. They are the most diverse ecosystem, harboring many unique plants and animal species. However, over the past century, there has been a rapid decline of the longleaf pine ecosystems due to the lack of fire and human, and human destruction. In order to restore the longleaf pine, we have, to, we have to do an active restoration process. We need to understand how longleaf pine savanna will respond to climate change. Heat waves are expected to increase in frequency under climate change, which could hinder the restoration effects. In my independent project, I study the effects of heat waves on plant stress, reproduction of Schizarium scoparium, and this project will hopefully be used to help land managers better restore the longleaf pine savanna under climate change conditions. Background, uh, the longleaf pine savanna, also known as LLP savanna, is, holds the vast rich understory with diverse plant and animal communities. Um, the longleaf pine ecosystem relies heavily on prescribed fires, but due to human involvement, um, this ecosystem has drastically decreased due to the lack of the prescribed fires and destruction of wildfire and wildlife. Why is climate change important for longleaf pine savanna? Well, basically, due to climate change, heat waves have increased in frequency, intensity, and duration. So, to restore the longleaf pine ecosystem, we need to understand how plants will respond to these heat waves. My target to study species is little blue stem, also its scientific name, Schizarium scoparium. Little blue stem is one of the most dominant and valuable native plant species in the longleaf pine savanna ecosystem. They're also known as beard grass or sage grass. Um, but basically the blue stem gets its name from its bluish color um, from the stem base in the springtime, but it also can be a mahogany red base in the fall. But at maturity, the little blue stem seeds are reproduced. They're very fuzzy and white. Um, and also at maturity, they reach a height of two to four feet. The methods for my experiment, experiment basically was a sample of 60 total plots. Um, these plots were um, under treatments of control and in in, under control and heat wave. The control meaning there was no heat wave simulation for the plants and in a heat wave, um, the simulation was 15 days with no water, low humidity and high temperatures. And from this treatment, I measured percent green, number of flowering and number of flowering stems. For my results, um, there was definitely a decrease on from both control and heat wave um, from measured time points. Um, using the two-way ANOVA to analyze how average percent green changes across the time points in my experiment and within our treatment conditions. To fund the average percent green significantly decreased um, lower under heat wave conditions. However, we found that there was a significant effect, uh, effect of the interaction of time points and treatments. So basically, there was definitely a decline of little blue stem from measured time points. This table, um, average number of flowering for measuring time points, this basically shows the reproduction of the little blue stem. There was definitely a decline in both presence of flower and average numbering flowering stems. Um, but because so few individual plants flowered over the course of my experience, we did not have enough replication to properly analyze the treatment differences. Implication, so according to my results, we found that percent green did decrease over time in both control and heat wave conditions. While very few plants flowered overall, this prevented us from analyzing this data further. And it seemed that definitely flowering occurred less under heat wave conditions compared um, to the control conditions. 
Why does this matter? Well, basically measuring the percent green of Schizarium scoparium allows us to see the overall stress of plants in a heat wave. And it helps us to understand how how Schizarium scoparium basically recovers from a heat wave. Um, instead, it remained very stressed, which definitely can neg negatively impact the restoration process. Future work, in the future, it is important to test these trends in field of restoration so we can understand how climate change can affect the restoration process in long leaf pine savannas. Um, hopefully this project will also raise awareness and educate land managers about the effects of heat waves on the understory plant community. And here are some pictures from my project. Acknowledgement, acknowledgements. <laughs> I would like to thank my faculty supervisor, Sally Corner, for allowing me to be part of her ecology research lab. Um, I also like to thank my mentor, Morgan Frost, for guiding me through my research project and just being that mentorship for me throughout my ecology lab um, semesters. I also like to thank both the Linda West Little Endowment Fund and the University of North Carolina Biology Department for funding my independent research project. I'll additionally like to thank you, Circo, for allowing me the opportunity to present my research project for the virtual expo, and I'd like to thank the rest of my graduate and undergraduate peers in the college lab. Thank you.